Hello and welcome to Board Stupid. My name's Wayne. And I'm Matt. And if you've recently seen and are familiar with this wonderful looking board, you'll know that we did our initial first impressions video uh, that we did for the guys at Dark Omen. Yeah, and if you haven't seen it, well, link is here. You, sh you should see it because it's, uh, it's, it's a really good one. Good one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Matt worked hard on that one. Um, but yeah, um, today it, we're still talking about Dark Omen, but we're going to go a little bit more in deep into the, to the mechanics and, and that is always going to be more a conversational piece about the usual things that you already see when we do a review. Again, this is not a review review because yeah. we're still talking about the prototype, but this is going to give you, if you need more information about the yeah. game and uh, you're thinking about should, should I back it, should I not, Definitely back it, watch this, and you will understand why. Yeah, so we're going to get a little bit more granular uh, before uh, to help you make that decision. Yeah. Um, and other decisions that they should make, Matt, what's a nice, easy decision for the people at home uh, to make? The first things that you need to do, I think, is to hit the subscribe button. Easy decision? Yeah. Yeah. Hit that button. Just like, yeah, this doesn't cost you, you don't need to pledge for don't it. Don't need to you pledge for like, it. You click and you click got it. it. Like no. magic. It's like magic. No. You don't need to wait like a year or two. You, you it's immediate. It's amazing. Best delivery time. Oh Happens right now, mate. Um, and talking about delivery and stuff, why don't you have a look to the Into the AM link in the description and here? Um, because uh, Into the AM is our sponsor and they produce this fantastic graphic t shirt and a lot of other stuff. Fantastic so, leisure wear. Yeah, you can look at, the, at their website and um, yeah, fantastic fit, fantastic. The, the, the quality is actually amazing. Amazing. That's yeah. it's, it's really good. Some wonderful clothes. So get, go bag yourself some new clobber. Hit the special link down below. And yeah. Matt, they will get ten percent off on top of any discounts yeah. they can so, buy. So yes, yeah, so if the guys into the AM are doing some discounts, for example, they got a lot of like three for two, uh, three for two stuff like this. Um, the ball stupid code at the checkout will give you an extra 10%. So to whatever it is. And they do delivery UK, US, Europe, so um, absolutely everywhere. So is that enough Say of them? That. Yeah, I think we are ready to go deep into the dark omen now. Let's get deep. Let's get dark. Let's get omeny. Let's get omeny. So Matt, this is a cooperative adventure game, which yes. we've already talked about on the hype video that we've yep. done for it. And in many cooperative games, you typically have kind of an action-based system, and that's no really no different really here. You have actions that you will take during yeah. the day to do different things. Yeah, I think the um, the different things is this, the special thing about uh, Dark Omen is that the setup you basically your turns are days yes and um, and you're going along this larger trucker to count how many days the days passing and um, each day will be um, uh, divided in uh, 24 action so each day is 24 action um, and every six days you then will finish your chapter that will lead you to the boss fight Mm, absolutely. So it's quite nicely divided in that way where you yeah. can think of your actions as taking an hour or, or whatever. And you mark out how your actions are used by using your cube in, in yeah. your player's colour. For example, this yellow one moves three, four, five, six. Uh, and then that's the turn. So the turn is six actions. It's a well. quarter, quarter of the quarter day. Quarter of the day. Exactly. And um, uh, as you can see here, we'll put picture and everything. The the board is divided, the, the, the day tracker is divided between night and day. Mm -hmm. uh, so you always start at, at dawn in the morning, because yep. uh, adventurer really likes to get up early. Get up early, mate. Uh, yeah. But you can stay up all night. Yeah. Um, and um, of course, this will mean that um, something will differ between the day and night. Yeah. So for example, we saw there is a lot of enemies that are stronger at night, yeah. for, exa for example, goal or monster or mm. sometimes, uh, or um, some of, you can have some benefit or debuff if yes. it's day or night, depending on your mission. Yeah, absolutely. So once you've had your turn of six actions, everyone else needs to catch up and do their six actions. And then you start the, the whole round again, and after four rounds of six actions, that day is over, 
And ideally, within that day, you need to have completed your task, which yeah. is, in this case, your omen. Your omen. So, at the start of the game, you will shuffle the omen deck, mm -hmm. and you will pick up one of the omens. Uh, they're basically quests. Yeah. So, every day, you will have to complete a, a different quest and keep going up on the market. As you can see here, we got four um, red token that this one is basically telling you when you need to draw um, a quest. Yeah, exactly. Um, and when you don't have any quest on that day, it could be the day that you're actually going out and Go exploring shopping. the world. Yeah, yeah shopping or yeah, um, looting. Yeah, so, so you, can do, you can do whatever you want. Go to, to the do. different um, actions and locations yeah. on the board. So it's quite interesting in that way where it divides up between time spent questing and then time spent doing whatever adventurers want to do in their yeah. day off. And again, time off. And, and there is here, now again, this is the prototype, but um, you can select at the start of your, of your session how difficult you want to make the game. Yeah. That means that you can add more Omen tokens for that chapter. That means that you will not have those rest time yeah. in between mission. That means like it's quest, 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 boss. Yeah. Um, so you that there is kind of like you can select how difficult yeah. the game um, sort will of be. built in difficulty scaling. Yeah, yeah, which is and quite nice. that's that's really good. So if you want to have a, a good time, you might have just a just three um, quests during during the first chapter. Otherwise, if you want to be hardcore, you can have a, a quest every day. Uh, but keep in mind that every quest, as, as at least the one that we play, they use always got a certain amount of time that you need to complete them. Some of them is one day, some of them are a couple of days, some of them is before nightfall. Yeah. So it's, um, that's why keeping the, the track of time is really important. Absolutely. So that's a little bit about the structure of the game. Matt, should we dig into a few of these omens for the people? Yeah, let's have a look how do you actually maybe play a turn. Let's do that. So right here I've managed to draw an omen and this one is saying uh, it's a wolf pack. Uh, so for better or worse, last night's drinking has taken its toll. With a throbbing head and numb fingers, you find yourselves scattered in the mountains, desperately trying to get back on your feet without breaking a bone. You discover a pack of wolves has picked up your scent. Ooh. They are the spies of the darkness. The wolves take to their heels and try to flee through the dense woods. So it gives you the setup uh, here, which is a whole bunch of rules, and starting with the obstacle roll. Match. Yes. Should we talk about that in a bit more yes, detail? Yes, absolutely. So it links very well um, uh, talking about the board. Uh, the board, as you can see, is a circular board and is formed by um, different layers that will basically pivot within each other mm -hmm. um, so it makes it that um, basically creates on the board a different puzzle a different um, um, so labyrinth, labyrinth like, like every, every yeah. time so at, at the start of each game you will have to do um, an obstacle roll that will determine where you need to twist and turn your board Absolutely. And this will create the map for, for, the, for your adventure. Um, during the game, you will find out there are other ways to moving the board so you can modify the labyrinth um, as, as you wish. Absolutely. Some of the omens will have you roll the dice and then you'll have to move the, uh, the tabs, either the white or the clear tab, a certain number of uh, spaces according to what you've rolled. Yeah. But then some of the omens, very interestingly and very excitingly, will program where you put those tabs. Yes. Which will fix the setup of the map, and it'll be doing that for very specific reasons. Yes, exactly, because uh, at the end of the day, it's, a, it's an adventure game, yeah. uh, but there is a lot of puzzle uh, mm. in, the, in the game. Um, this links very well, let's talk about like the, the omens that we played yes. so far. Um, don't think that you're always gonna go out and killing monster and uh, collecting loot. All the time, you might need to grab some water from the river because the the village is on fire, mm -hmm. and you need to, to do that. Let's go and put that to, out. to save to save the people, and um, this is where the map really comes to life. Yeah, because then you will have basically this labyrinth, and need to need to figure out with the other player what's the best route and how to go to the river to the village with the limited time that you got. So. 
for example, no spoiler, but we found out that instead of us running to the river and going back to the village, we created basically a human like chain, a line, yeah, a chain to yeah. passing the buckets, and that that what made it made it for us. Um, so yeah, very interesting. Other ones would be. Um, there's another one that we played where we had to basically get from point A to point B in a certain amount of turn. And um, again, with the different labyrinths and the fact that you can move the boards, that is um, that was very difficult. Very, very <laughs> difficult. Very, very punishing. So it's quite interesting where the game gives you this really heady mix of sort of classic um, adventuring, fighting yeah. monsters, getting XP, getting reward. But then also what feels akin to mini games. Yeah. Where yeah, you'll be yeah, doing yeah. a bunch of different stuff yeah. to do with the board, to do with dice chucking, to do with a whole heap of different things uh, in really interesting and innovative ways. Yeah, and that will really, I think, capture our attention in yeah. terms of the of the of the missions, because it was like Okay, the first one you go out, kill kill wolves and uh, collect uh, blood and uh, then and, go and, and trade and, it in. Or yeah, it exactly. Um, and then yeah, another one was like, oh, uh, these girls have disappeared. You need to go and search for her. Did you collect some herbs and take them to the witch? Yeah, and things like it, that. It's, um... it, 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 they were very varied. And uh, they all feel like playing a different game. Yeah, quite um, interesting, but yeah. And uh, when we talked to the guys, to, to, to Errol and Lucas, about the, the game itself, I do understand when they say they wanted to create um, a kind of like a console yeah. um, where you can play a lot of different things. And this works absolutely perfectly for... That's a really good point, Matt, is that what they've created here isn't just a game. It is a structure from which you could then create endless adventures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, either in future, if they decide to do expansions for it, there is loads of scope for that. Yeah, or even for like fan-made stuff you could do Absolutely. based on the program programmatic. Yeah, approach exactly, to, exactly. Because um, um, again, the two the, the boards like uh, rotating on each other can be kind of like programmed, yes. I guess, and uh, so you know where how to build the labyrinth and what's going to happen. It's really, really clever, and the yes. guys put a lot of time into from the concept to the yeah. to the actual to, to this board. Yes. and you can see the. The, the, uh, the idea was good, but the, the actual um, mm. realization was even better. Absolutely. So we talked a little bit about how you might set up, and there's different setups with different omens, but regardless of any of that, you always have to do a rune throw. This yeah. is the other innovative thing that we talked about in our sort of in our hype video. And this is very interesting as well, because what it does is it will randomly set you up with a I suppose, a set of buffs and debuffs for yeah. that particular omen, for that particular adventure. Exactly. So what, what you do, you take four of these... Um, these runes? Yeah, these runes. That, yeah, they're not dice, they're runes. They're runes, which uh, is cool. You, you, you throw them on the board, and basically, depending on the symbol on them and the color, you will pick the corresponding card in the rune deck that yeah. you got, you right got there. And as you can see, there are quite, quite a lot of them. Yeah, it's and, quite a few uh, of these. So. Yeah, and, and each one, again, as you said, is buff or debuff, or sometimes like mini events that happen. Yeah. For example, the other day we were playing, and uh, apparently a, a bug entered into my ear and possessed, uh, possessed you, me. And then he had to, to fight me. And we had to fight <laughs> each other. So we started the adventure with, with, with less With less hate because he'd been Just beating like, me up. Yeah. And I've been like, what um, are you doing? Get off me. But all the others in cell will be, will be good. Like, for example, will give you a bonus in the damage, damage or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a tons of them and they're all like, they're all like, with a, this um, layer of dark humor that is really fun. And it has this great um, um, thematic integration here, because yeah. this is the intervention of the gods in Dark Omen, which yeah. actually goes through the whole theme of the game, all of the background history, all of the lore, mm -hmm. how, the, uh, how the gods layer over everything, and this is their impact on the adventurers, which is really nice. You're putting your hands uh, in, uh, yeah, in it, fate. Literally putting like, yourself, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're putting yourself in fate's hands. Uh, to see what happens, uh, and it's really, really cool. None of this is complete. Is going to completely break your adventure. No. Even if you get loads of debuffs, if anything, that's hilarious. 
but typically you'll get some minor up or down to help to, to start the, the adventure with. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's an adventure game. Yeah. Um, it's less of a dungeon crawler. It's, it, we're not talking about like one of those heavy dungeon crawls. There are really lots. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is more like for, for having fun. Yes. Uh, playing with friends again. Don't don't get me wrong. It's got its very serious and um, and uh, more problematic uh, moments where yeah. you actually need to to fight for your life. Uh, but it's, um, it's yeah. in a more like lighthearted way. Yeah, absolutely. Say. It's it's definitely got accessibility there. I think once you get later on into the game, Matt, there is much more complexity in terms yeah. of the design. So where you start having loads of interactions with your armor, with your weapons, yeah. with your different omens, and trying to look at all of those cards and see what they do. Maybe your items as well. Yeah. And then using your morale points in different ways. So there's enough meat on the bone where it's not just you know, chuck dice, see what happens. No, absolutely, absolutely. And um, again, while we're touching like that, the, the um, each character will have different powers. Yeah. So some some of them are more toward the the fighting. Some of them are more toward the uh, I don't know. You can steal side. stuff in yeah. at, at, at the market, so you don't pay for the for the objects. Um, and then um, once you progress into the game, each you can decide. Uh, how to specialize your yeah, yeah. your your character so you can uh, take an apprenticeship yeah yeah pre a, a, be an apprentice in one of the the different guild uh some of them again you got i don't know the druid the hunter yeah um um the architect the architect that is the most interesting one i think the architect is Best the one, one that totally broken right <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> Is is the one that will actually can manipulate the board while you play. Yeah. So as as you can imagine, it's quite um, super powerful. Yeah, super good. Super yeah. Good. Um, uh, but again, the the interaction between the um, the players and all the different um, skills will come very useful during the game. Yeah, absolutely. So it definitely cranks up, and the heat um, that definitely improves over a period of time. Um, and on that note. In terms of who this game is for, this certainly isn't, Matt, like a, uh, there's, there's not a Euro game. It's not like going to be strictly no. balanced. It's not going to be all no, that sort no, of no, stuff. No, 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 so no, no. if you're like a strict Euro gamer, which I typically am more on that side of, just be aware that this, this doesn't, this isn't that. No, okay. it's it's more toward the the American American style, um, American Bye, style. Yeah. Uh, you chuck runes, you chuck dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you you progress into a story. Yeah. Um, There's a narrative that, behind it that, as well. That, yeah. But I mean, that is more like the that. stuff that I love. Yeah, absolutely. And um, this was absolutely fantastic. I think it was in a fantastic uh, player experience. We played with. All the other players yeah. as well. Uh, we had a few sessions with um, even with our girlfriends, with yeah. friends, and uh, everybody loved it because it's, um, it's 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 easy to to get into. Absolutely, the story is never just like dark and um, it's yeah. more like. And you're not Fun. reading for hours yeah. at a time, and you don't have to spend the first hour explaining the rules to everybody. It's, you know, it, it, there's enough there to get into, but it's not so deep as to, you know, I haven't, haven't got someone at the table going, oh my yeah. God, when are the rules going to end and when are we going to play? No, no, no. You can play, yeah, you can very much play straight away. Because yeah. again, as you as we discussed, so like you literally count how many action, each everything you do is an action. Basically an action, and, yeah. um, and, and, and off you go. Um, one more thing that I want to add about the uh, the different omens, as we as we say, the different omens got different setup, different objective, and each one will introduce kind of like a different, like a new uh, rule. Let's call it rule, but like, um, for example, for one, instead of uh, um, having to we were running against each other to, yeah. to reach one, one, one location and I was chucking my dice to see how far I was going while you were chucking the other one to see if one of the monsters the would like, get awake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so that makes it like very fun to play yeah. in, or every time. Very different. interactive yeah, as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, Matt, should we talk a little bit about the different locations on the board and what they mean? Yeah. Um, so... As you can see, each each one of these tiles, let's call it tiles, yeah, yeah. I guess, spaces, um, tiles, yeah, will have some tokens on them. Uh, some are 
uh, locations, some are loot, so you can go somewhere and pick up the loot, um, or visit one of the um, the special the special places. Again, this one are very different to each other. Some of them like a campfire, mm. you can um, hit some food and recover yeah. some health. Uh, otherwise, uh, other ones are like the, the sanctuary or the temples where you can sacrifice uh, one of your belonging and one of your precious precious things to get some benefits or to move the map or to move the map yeah. um, so each one will be will be different and all of them needs to be discovered before you can use them yeah. um, so that makes again very interesting to see what you can do in the different locations absolutely and you have the two major towns at least at the start of the game yeah you know Hoglichton and Ravenston and in those towns you can do such things like rest and heal up or most importantly i think uh tool up for your next adventure yeah. by getting upgraded equipment and the equipment is amazing varied lots of different effects as well uh, lots of different interactions there um yeah so plenty you, you can, can do there yeah well. and uh, again when you go and buy the object again as i said earlier if you're if you're a thief you can try to steal it yeah. but otherwise you can try to, to haggle to haggle with the <laughs> to get, to get a discount on the prices yeah and right, again yeah. it's not like using the like chucking Just dice simple, and see yeah. if you if you convince him to to give you a discount basically absolutely um otherwise there are other things like you can go and actually talking about chucking dice doing some gambling to see yeah. if you can win some uh some extra some money. More yeah. um so a lot a lot of different things and again each showman then will may add something more again to the to the town absolutely all right matt we talked a lot about the adventuring we talked a lot about the board itself and the movement and actions should we talk about combat a little bit yeah let's talk about the combat okay. um combat wise as you can see here again um, each monster will have his own uh, little uh, board, cards there, little boards. Uh, with the with the with the with the card rail already in here. Um, very simple. It, the, the each monster will have a certain amount of life points, mm -hmm. uh, health points. What do you normally say? Life points or health points? I'd say life points. Normally, yeah, life yeah. points. What did you guys say? Yeah, you'd let us know. Yeah, health, health points, points or health life points. points. Yeah. Or are you like? Really avant garde, like vitality points. Vitality. Yeah, wow. yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> right, anyway, um, each H HP. Each monster then will have um, a certain amount of damage they 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 can do to you, and uh, some defense. For example, some of them uh, will absorb certain number of uh, damage before before actually getting damage. Nothing. Too, too special about it. It's something that you guys are very used to. Yeah. Um, however, the, the fight between uh, the monster and yourself is quite is fun and uh, quick yes. and uh, a, 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 a pretty much easy. Gets out of the way. Can you grab yeah. us a couple of dice, Matt? Yeah. Let's do that. I'm sorry. Matt's going to disappear. Right? Matt's going to go off screen and grab some dice. All right. So, if you play the monster, Matt, and I'll play the hero, we'll yeah. do an example of combat. We'll show you how quick it is. So, you are the monster. But you're the hero in that case. I'm the hero. I'll be the monster. Okay. Then. So the hero, as the hero, I will uh, chuck two dice. In this case, um, this is like I'm level two. I'll chuck two dice. Exactly. And I'm fighting a level two monster. Who is chucking two that's dice? That's chucking two dice. Sometimes nice. different, but that's nice. Yeah. This is like the standard. Normally, it will work like this. We both roll the dice, so another player will play the monster in that case. And basically, what you do, you pair the highest your highest roll with the monster highest roll. So for example, I got a four here and you got a two. We paired this and then the second one, I got a two and you got another two. Nice and easy. I win one. So you can do some damage to me. So I can do some damage to you. And then we I tied one. We tied the other one and Nothing that's happened. it. Nothing happened. But you can spend morale points, which is one of the big resources in this game, yes. to modify your dice roll. So in this instance, Matt as the hero could spend two morale points to turn this from a two to a three. Yeah. Two morale points per uh, unit of change uh, to then beat the monster there as well to do exactly. extra damage. And after that, you will check your, your, your weapon and stuff and that will tell you which 
type of dice you need to roll for damage. It could be a D4, could D6, be a D6, a D8, D8 whatever it is, yeah. Whatever. Um, but Krita, you touched about the um, the morale point. So as you can see here on the board, you got two different trackers. Mm -hmm. One is your life points, your health, and the other one is the morale. Morale point is kind of like in other games you could call it the mana, maybe. Maybe or, mana, but yeah. It's not really a mana, but kind of, kind of like, kind of like that. And you can use again to manipulate your dice. So there is dice man manipulation, and yep. uh, if you got the morale point, you can always win fights. Yeah. Um, but other action will require you to do to use your morale point. Absolutely. Yeah. For example, when you're moving around the board and you, you hit an obstacle, but you need to go through, you can use morale point to jump that obstacle and keep it's going through your... It's yeah. expensive, but you can do that. And, and so, it is a great yeah. way of using morale, sorry. And sometimes you must use sometimes it. Sometimes you to, must, to, yeah. Yeah, if, if you are in a very short scale of time that you need to complete your quest, you just need to go through the... the to, to, the, to the point where you need to go, you will have to jump obstacles. So you need to make sure to keep those morale points for the obstacle rather than winning fights. Absolutely. So really smart, really easy. We can also talk about team-up attacks, where if me and Matt were fighting the same monster, relatively straightforward, Matt would roll his hero dice, I would roll my hero dice, the monster doesn't get any extra dice. So regardless of what happens with pairing up highest to highest and, and, and lowest to lowest, um, you're going to get two free hits on the monster. So yeah. team-up attacks are super powerful. They're super powerful, especially when you're fighting bosses. Yeah, bosses and big monsters. You're going to need to team up and work yeah, together. Yeah, because of course the bosses instead, they will have special attack, they will have special, special defense, yeah. and, uh, and as you can imagine, they're way, way harder than they're a normal zombie or a normal, or a normal goal. Should we talk about those bosses then quickly? Or do yeah, want... let's talk about the, the bosses. Yeah, let's find out one of the bosses cards for you. Okay, let's talk about the boss. This is the, um, again, when we're talking about all of this, we're still talking about the prototype. So yes. again, if this is going to change along the way, uh, we will let you know. Yeah. Uh, but this is, again, this is the prototype and this is the rules that we're playing with. The guys are constantly to fine tuning the, the rules and everything. You will most likely find the rule book on the game found page where so you can have a look yourself mm -hmm. this in 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 six month times this could be different maybe mm -hmm. not because i think the guys are very much close to the to the mm -hmm. final product um but yeah uh, let's talk about no spoiler because this is the, the boss from the, the first, first chapter, chapter so, yeah exactly yeah and it's this big scary bear rather <laughs> the cave bear yeah and um basically it's it what, uh, during the fight, it was really fun because Barbara, this big bear, starts from a position on the board and is trying to reach the uh, the village. Just charging towards the village at to full pace to destroy and it. Yeah. And you need to stop it yeah. with everything you got. So good. And the help of some uh, of some mercenaries and some yeah. and some soldier. So it, again, this is something very fun about the boss fights. I will say every yeah. time is, there's something different. Uh, in this case, you can pay for this for some soldier. You can recruit yeah. more soldiers, some archers, and put them around the place and scatter them around the um, around the map. And uh, hopefully, Vavra will will pass through the through them and get some damage from yeah. those soldier as well. And you better hope she does because she got lots of health. Yeah, it's hard to kill. Yeah, and we lost it. We lost the... <laughs> one. We were one away. But, uh, she had one health point left. Yeah, one health point left, and but one, one space away. But I think I rolled the monster roll and I rolled a bunch of sixes. Yeah, and the bear destroyed it's the village. Destroyed. Uh, <laughs> but it was really, really fun. It was to, so to much play. fun. Very tense. Yeah. Very exciting. Watching the bear just trundle forwards around the obstacles and stuff. It was great. Yeah. And again, if I read a couple of things, like um, when you, you when you control the the boss, uh, for example, here he says um, it's got three different attacks. Uh, you roll the dice one to six, 
a one, two, three, she will do, she or he, I don't know, a bear, hit. Baba. Baba. Uh, will do one type of attack uh, on a four, on a five. It will do an attack, it will push you back so you'll burn it away from, so you from, have to spend from the bear. spend actions to chase her again, um, so yeah. So ev every time it's, um, it's going to be doing Super something, awesome. something yeah. different. Again, um, nothing too too complicated. It's very much like roll a die. What she does is this or that, and that's the effect. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then you keep going uh, between your turn and the boss turn. Absolutely, but super fun. The other one that we played was a gigantic snake, gigantic yeah. kind of like warm snake. Yeah, really cool, like a like a June worm. Or yeah, it was yeah. huge. And it was really great because the different segments of it were on different segments of the player board. And I thought that was so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically the, the monsters stretch out on different different, different segments, tiles, different on, tiles yeah. on the map. And you need to destroy the different segments, right? You need to <laughs> cut it <laughs> until you so can cool. get to the head. Yeah. And, and that was really good. Um, no, absolutely. Uh, the boss fights are different. They, they do different things. They're they exciting. Different yeah. mechanics. And they're always on the edge where you're gonna win or you're gonna lose. Yeah. Maybe you're gonna lose, but yeah. <laughs> you have fun doing it, trying to be a hero. But it's not punishing because again, the story every time if you manage to 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 kill the boss or not, the story will keep forwards and it will, they will still give you. It's a bit of a fall forward mechanism. Yeah. So you'll either get an extra bonus if you succeeded. Yeah. Or maybe it won't be so good if you if you failed. But doesn't matter. You move on to the next moment. On you go. Exactly. And you carry yeah. on. Uh, and you've got this overarching tracker, which is the light and the dark. Yeah. And if you win these things, typically you're going to push it towards the light. If you lose, typically you're going to push it towards the dark. And you just continue. Yeah. And something bad happens when uh, uh, you go too we much into the dark. We don't know what that is yet, but we'll, we'll find out. Well, if it goes too much into the darkness, you lose the game. So oh, there, there is that. that. No, probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, Matt, there is also player death. Or character death in this, right? But I think when a character dies, you can go and grab their stuff and fight a zombie version of the old character, which is so really, really this, cool. This was when I was reading the rule book that was like, this is the most great thing. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> um, so your character can actually die, and that's it. Then he's out of the game. They did. Um, when he dies, you put your um, like a cemetery tiles on whatever your character has died. You pick up another character and, and start, start again. again yeah. If that character that you wanted had some very nice, I don't know, a relic sword or something like really cool that, you, that, whatever, that yeah. you want, basically what you need to do, you need to go whatever your previous character died and um, kind of like fight against yourself because you your do character. The encounter became a zombie version of your old character with with some special attack utilizing your old weapon your old great. weapon so you basically need to kill kill yourself your old self it's <laughs> to, so cool yeah and that will cost you some morale points of that's quite sad to do yeah, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely and it's such a cool feature of the game yeah. and there are so many cool features of this game it's like we talked about before, it's tremendously innovative. It's doing this big classic adventure game in a completely new way. Yeah. In a way that we've never seen before. No, it's um, um, the guys did a fantastic job, even just like in the in the writing element of the game, in the yeah. narrative. The, the, the narrative of the game. is wonderful, the writing is very um, good. Yeah. The mechanics are very fluid and so they will not the story will not interrupt the gameplay and the gameplay will not interrupt the story. So yeah. it's very much yeah. fluid in, in between the, um, yeah. the the two elements and uh, it's very fun to play. That's yeah. that's the reality. It's it very is fun to very play. fun to play. But Matt, let's talk a little bit about, um, I suppose, the status of the project. As of the date of this recording, it's not live yet. But it will be live soon. while you watch. Probably this. as you watch this. Yeah. Actually, yeah. in fact, I'm pretty sure as you watch this, it's live. So, um, if you are interested, please do check out the game found link that we're going to put in the description. Yeah. Uh, so, go, do check that out. It is, and let's be honest, mate, it is a project in development. So there are changes going yeah, on of course. all of the time. Of course. So. Um, the guys have worked on this game for like three years Three now. years, I think it is, yeah. So, um, it's, it's an ambitious project. It's a very ambitious project. Yeah. Uh, again, the board itself is something 
never seen before. Yeah. Um, again, the, the even like the me- the mechanical part of the board needed a lot of development yeah. and then to, to make sure that everything runs smoothly and mm. um, you can play around with it without breaking it. Yeah. Um, that is um, that took a lot of time and the yes. guys really went deep Let's count on it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, of course, some of the elements talk and stuff, all of that might change. Yes. But as far as we can see, well, the elements that we received in the prototype, yes. this is already a very, very good. Yeah, game. it's yeah, it's very, very good. Um, but yeah, just have a look at the game film page. Go check it out. Go check out the rule book. Um, there's more development going on, but it is such a tremendous project. Again, super, super ambitious. They've already got... Um, arrangements with uh, production companies to get yeah. built. So there's no mess about there. No, that, no, no, once, no, no, no. Once everything is fixed and ready to go, they can hit the button. And then yeah, the guys did their own work. They've, yeah, they've <laughs> done all that in terms of production, etc., And then it's ready to rock. Matt, is there anything else you want to mention? Um, I just want to mention that this, we watched this game growing in the last yes. few years. Um, and I am very, very happy with the guys, what the guys did. Yeah. Um, both um, Errol and Lucas are board gamers. Yeah. Uh, so this is a, a game that doesn't come from a, from a big company. This is a, a board game from board gamers. Yeah. Passion to board projects. Gamers. Yeah. Um, it's been. I know that we we, we talk with them a lot, and uh, we know how much love, blood, and sweat went into this project. And I can only say that they did a fantastic job. Yeah. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see more and more of what they 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 yeah. bringing out. I'm super excited to see the final version of this as well. So um, tremendous stuff. Match. We take it to the outro. Okay. So hopefully you have enjoyed that in depth discussion on Dark Omen. Hopefully it gives you a really strong idea of what the game is, how it plays, and whether or not it's right for you. But what do you think? Has this encouraged you or enticed you to go and back it on GameFound? Is it your sort of thing? Have you seen anything like this before? I don't think you did. (laughs) (laughs) Great, sorry, but I don't think anyone did. Unless you saw this game, Espiel, last 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 winter, or the the one before, I don't think something like this ever, ever came out. So uh, if you have, let us know in the comments below. Uh, But other than that, Matt, what do the people need to do? Well, first of all, um, go and check the Into the AM link for your 10% discount. Don't forget about that. If you need some nice graphic t-shirts, yeah, go and and check in. And uh, after you've done that, or maybe before, or maybe both in between, in between um, click the subscribe button because yeah. this is really helps us as a channel uh, bringing more to you. And last thing, go down in the description and check the um, the, the game found link for Dark Omen. Have a look, read through all the stuff that is already there on the page, uh, the rule book, the, all the images, all the, the stuff we haven't talked about for for example, the minis. These again, these are prototypes. Are really, really nice minis. So, yep. um, more, more to follow on that as well on the on the game fan page. Uh, but yeah, I I'll back the game because it's fantastic. Um, I I really, really, really like it. It's um, that middle ground between being uh, a very serious adventure game and a lighter heart that just hit a lot of boxes. Love it. Don't need to say any more than that. (laughs) So, (laughs) like, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you again real soon. Ciao.